Hello everyone and welcome back to our videos. Today we will talk about the second law of gas, Charlie's law. In the last video we talked about physics, we talked about the first gas law. And that gas law, if you remember it, that was talking about the Boyle's law and the equations that talking about the law. Today we will talk about the Charlie's law. Jack Charlie's found that all gases expand and contract in direct proportion to any change in absolute temperature. How that's come? That's what I will illustrate it for you now. For a gas, temperature and volume are directly proportional, keeping everything else constant. As temperature of gas goes up, its volume goes up. and the temperature of the gas goes down its volume goes down if heat up a gas it's expanding the gas particles move faster and they take up more space an example a balloon that expands when gas particle bang against the sides by expanding that keeps the pressure constant the faster the gas particle they move the more they will push on the sides of the balloon expanding it on the other hand you cool the gas down you put your balloon on ice that slows down the particles of the gas so the balloon will contract this relationship known as Charlie's law and is represented by the equation V1 divided V2 equal to T1 divided T2 V1 it means the initial volume V2 it means revised volume the T1 it means initial temperature T2 it means revised temperature Charlie's law also states that if the volume of a gas is held constant the pressure increases and decreases in direct proportion to change in absolute temperature this relation is represented by the equation p1 divided p2 equal to t1 divided t2 the p1 it means initial pressure p2 compressed pressure the t1 initial temperature T2 means revised temperature. We have an example, but before we start answering the question, we have to understand this. When working a gas problem involving temperature, you must convert all temperature and the pressure to absolute values. That means the temperature, if it is on Fahrenheit, you have to change it to Rankin and if the temperature in Celsius you have to change it to Kelvin what about the pressure if the pressure is gauge pressure you have to change it to absolute pressure now we will have this example if a cylinder of gas under a pressure of 1500 BSI gauge at 60 Fahrenheit is left in the sun and heats up 
to a temperature of 100 Fahrenheit. What is the pressure within the cylinder? Here we change the 60 Fahrenheit to Rinken and you know how to change from Fahrenheit to Rinken and the second temperature we change it to Rinken after that we go to the bridger and change it to from BSI gauge to BSI A that means absolute bridger now we will write our equation and we will write the second equation because it talk about pressure and temperature now the V1 divided the P1 divided the B2 B1 we know it it's 1514.7 B2 that's what we will find it equal to 520 this T1 divided to T2 that's 560 Rinken after the multiplication we find that we will divide it by 520 we will find that B2 is equal to 1631.22 PSI a if you want here to change the absolute pressure to gauge pressure what you have to do you will take the absolute pressure and you will subtract by the atmospheric pressure as we see here General gas law. The general gas law combines both Boyle's and Charlie's law into one formula. This allows you to calculate pressure, volume, or temperature. And here we have our equation P1 multiply V1 divided to T1 equal to P2 multiply V2 divided to T2 here the P1 as we studied is the initial pressure the V1 is the initial volume the T1 is the initial temperature P2 is the compressed pressure V2 is the compressed volume and T2 is the revised temperature here we have an example let's see you have 1000 liters of a gas at 30 celsius and 100 psi gauge if you rise the pressure of a gas to 300 psi gauge and its temperature to 150 celsius you can find its volume by using the general law but here but in your consideration you must convert both temperature and the pressure to absolute values and we know how to change it the P1 is equal to 100 psi gauge we will change it to absolute pressure and the B2 equal to 300 gauge pressure we will change it to absolute pressure here its volume we will not change it and here the V2 what we need to find it the T1 is equal to 30 celsius we see here we change it to Kelvin and the T2 we change it to Kelvin also here we will write our formula the P1 multiply V1 
divided to T1 equal to P2 multiply V2 divided T2. After we write it, the numbers, we make our multiplications and we find that the V2 is equal to 508.82 liters. At the end of this video, we will talk about the Dalton Law. The Dalton Law illustrates that the total pressure exerted on the container is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. When a mixture of two or more gases which do not combine chemically is placed in a container, each gas expands to fill the container when exposed to heat or when we rise the temperature. However, as discussed earlier, when a gas expands, its pressure decreases. Therefore, each gas exerts a partial pressure. So, what's the meaning of the partial pressure? It's important when working with the aircraft environmental systems. For example, at about 10,000 feet, the partial pressure of oxygen drops and is no longer capable of forcing its way into a person's blood. Because of this, either cabin pressurization or supplemental oxygen is needed at high altitude.